professional golf is back. We're here at the stunning Hollingwell Golf Club near Nottingham for the Clutch Pro Tour's first major of the 2020 season. Assembled here at one of Britain's finest inland venues is an incredible field of over 120 players, featuring ex Ryder Cup stars, multiple European Tour winners and Britain's number one ranked female golfer in Charlie Hull. It's going to be an unbelievable day's play and I can't wait to go and take in some of the action, so let's get out there. such a special goal it's actually um, it's just brutal to be honest with you you know if you're not quite on your a game it'll uh, it'll definitely highlight your uh, your errors so uh, it's just a fantastic layout I mean every hole is like one of them holes that could be on the back of the scorecard type thing so uh, it's just the setting everything and the last three holes are, uh, are just I, I think personally are fantastic like how they're set into the uh, into the pine trees in the little like a little arena around 17 it's uh, it's fantastic Hollingwell's ranked inside the top 50 course in the British Isles and inside the top 20 in England. And even on the most benign day, it'll provide an incredibly stern test for any professional golfer. But as you can see, we're up here on the 13th tee, the highest point of the golf course, and it's pretty gusty. So it's gonna to be tough going for all the guys out there today and the girls. One of the groupings that certainly caught the eye today was that featuring 2008 Ryder Cup star Oliver Wilson and 25th ranked women's golfer Charlie Hull. And it turned out in this open access event that Charlie was having a great day at the office. I really like the golf course. It's the first time I've been around here in about 12 years. So um, it, was, it was good, but the weather was super windy. So it was tricky some lines, but no, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. I like him. Um, I always play with the boys anyway, like the play with Ollie today. Um, I really enjoy playing with him and just, Watching his short game is really good. He's got a really good short game, and I chipped and chipped and putted quite well as well. So it's just nice to play with the boys in a comp. Just a good buzz around the event. It's always good coming to Hollingwell and playing, but um, quite a few people around, obviously being sensible. Um, everyone involved in the tournament. Yeah, it, it was good. It was interesting. Um, I wasn't. I kind of expected it to be pretty basic, and it wasn't. It was. It felt like a really good event. So I was quite pleased. And I know Charlie. Um, I've never played with her, but I was really impressed. Um, played way better than me. Um, I th she was unlucky really, she was so solid, tee to green, um, didn't really hold loads but um, yeah it was good you know, um, but yeah what can I say, I mean I, uh, you can see how good she is and you can see why she's doing what she's doing, she just looks really solid all the way through again. Famed for his textbook swing and staring down the likes of Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods in Abu Dhabi in 2012, Robert Rock is one of the European game's most respected figures. He's relished the opportunity to come and experience what the Clutch Pro Tour has to offer the past couple of weeks. How, how exciting is it and how interesting is it to be playing in a kind of a forward thinking event like this where it's open access and mixed gender? Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. It's um, some of the people I've been working with haven't played as yet, but I'm looking forward to the, the day that we all play the same event. Maybe I'll get to play with them as well and you can see how they compete properly because it's different to just watching them hit balls and practice and then getting feedback when they play tournaments. But to be able to watch, um, watch people play is the, I think that's really the, the key part to coaching. You can see what they're doing great and some things that they might be able to improve on. And I've, that's one of the fortunate parts of me coaching some of the players on the tour that I play with them every week and I know what they're facing. So um, that's really what mini tours are about. You've got to see whether you've got the stomach for it. And it's, it's not for everyone, it's pretty, it's pretty hard going. What did you learn from playing alongside someone like Rocky today? Just a, good, just, just a very good all-round player, isn't he? Um, wealth of experience, uh, be able to pick his brains a little bit as well. And um, you know, if you if you can beat those sort of guys, then you're sort of doing something right, aren't you? So that's that's what you take from the day, really. I didn't do anything particularly great. I just didn't do anything particularly all that all that wrong either. Made a couple of bogeys out there, uh, which is probably to be expected today on in these conditions. And picked up some nice shots. Made a nice two into the 13th, which is playing a real long hole today. So a lovely shot in there. Um, hold a nice bunker shot on the fourth as well, just to get my round going. So, I just just play just played some solid stuff. Despite the inclement conditions, the field's highest-ranked male golfer, Andy Sullivan, set an imposing clubhouse target of five under par with a fine round of 67. 
for a good while, it seemed that this total was safe and that nobody would catch Sullivan and deny him the victory and the £10,000 first prize. But then, up stepped George Bloor. Courtesy of a stunning approach, Bloor found the dance floor in two blows at the par 5 17th to set up a birdie that gave him a sniff of victory heading down the last. Sadly though, it was at the 18th where Bloor's challenge faltered. After finding trouble off the tee, he made a bogey, leaving him in the pack tied at three under par in a tie for third. The tournament wasn't over just yet though, as Zimbabwean Benjamin Follett Smith stepped into the fray. Crucial birdies at both the 16th and 17th holes left Follett Smith needing just a par at Hollingwell's iconic home hole. After finding a spot of bother with his approach, Follett Smith then showed admirable composure under pressure to make a clutch up and down and take the title. Yeah, it means obviously a heap. I think £10,000 to anyone is a lot of money and um, especially coming out of lockdown, whereas the professional golfers have been struggling, we've been paying, paying and not actually making or being able to make anything. So it's a big help and um, yeah, just would like to keep on playing well. It was a nervy one coming down the stretch there, a couple of birdies late on and then coming down 18, found the trap on 18, had to make a good up and down. Can you just talk us through that up and down and talk us through the emotions of it? Yeah, well, I kind of just fed off what I've done before previously in my career. Fortunately, I have won a couple of times before. And I just knew that you've just got to stay in the present and you can't focus on what could be or what might happen or will I be able to make up and down. It's like I wasn't even worried about making up and down. I was just making sure that I hit a good bunk shot the best I could. And then you've got to worry about making a good putt. And if you can focus one step at a time, kind of one golf shot at a time, it helps. And I managed to do or play it pretty well. Pretty good bunk shot, considering the lie and considering the wind and everything. And then, yeah, just made a five foot putt for par. Yeah, happy to lift the Zim flag up high and, yeah, continue with the African spirit, I guess.